Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to forecast sales of a company and I choose Netflix. So first we download the data from Merchant Online and you see total revenue and date here and then we need to organize the data so I copy paste and then here paste uh, transpose of the data. So the data starts from 2014 quarter 1 and ends it 2020 quarter 3. And as you see here, the period that we have sales data is called in sample period. And also we want to forecast two years of sales data, which two years is equal to eight quarters. So I have eight quarters here that I want to forecast the sales of Netflix. And that period, which we don't have the sales data is called out of sample. I'm going to use two methods. The first one is exponential smoothing technique and the second one is the regression models. So we can use several exponential smoothing technique but the best way is we need to find the most appropriate model for our data set. In order to make a decision first we need to visualize the data. Here on this graph you can see the Netflix sales over the year and you can clearly see that there is a trend in the data but we don't see seasonal variations and if you remember if there is a trend and no seasonal variations holes is the best method if you have both trend and seasonal variations then winter is going to be the best method so given this information we can first use holes method and i'm going to show in this video how to use holes method to forecast Netflix revenue. If you remember from the previous videos, we start holds forecasting by using the revenue of the first period. And our trend for the first period is zero. And FIT is the sum of smooth forecasts and the trend forecast. Now for the second period, we are going to use the formulas in the screen box. And let me move this here and then this one here and you see that for the level forecast starts with FT I need the prior period FIT which I choose and then plus I need a smoothing constant and I have two smoothing constants for holds method which are alpha and beta and I randomly assign 0.5 and 0.5 and I'm going to use this alpha and beta to forecast sales but then at the end of this video I'm going to show how you can use Excel solver to find the best alpha and beta to forecast this data. So we will select alpha here but remember we want to keep alpha constant therefore you are going to click on your keyboard F4 to fix the cell and if F4 function doesn't work you just need to put dollar sign around the letter L to fix the cell and then I'm following the formula in the green box so we need to multiply this number and we open the parentheses in the parentheses we need the revenue from the previous period minus we need the final forecast which is FIT from the previous period and then we close and then enter and for trend forecast we are going to use the formula in the green box so we start with an equal sign trend is equal to trend from the previous period plus the beta smoothing constant which needs to be fixed again just click F4 if it doesn't work insert dollar sign around the cell times open the parentheses FT which is the smooth forecast for this period minus FIT from the previous period that's it so we have calculated second period forecast for smooth and trend FIT is the sum of these two so we are going to just drag down this formula when you drag down the formula just I want you to be careful because you know that to forecast future periods more than one period ahead we use a different equation for holes and for that reason, I'm going to delete this part that are equal to zero. And I will do this for the trend too. Again, after 2020 quarter four, 
trend forecast is not correct, so I'm deleting the cells. And FIT is the sum of these two, and again, I have to delete cells that are zero. So, what is happening here? I have already inserted the forecast data. Our graph updates this information. Therefore, we have here, let me show you the legend. And you can see that the blue line represents the actual sales and the red line represents our forecast using Holtz method. I said that I assign alpha and beta randomly and I choose 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And remember, smoothing constants should be between zero and one. So we can use Excel solver to find the best alpha and beta for this data. In the next step, using solver, we are going to improve our forecast. Let me show you first how you can find solver data. And then here you have solver. Click on that. For solver, we need to set an objective function. For forecasting, our objective is always to minimize error. And if you remember, root mean square error shows the forecast error and also it helps us to evaluate the performance of the models. The lower the root mean square, the better the model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my objective to minimize root mean square error. And then I am going to choose variables that I can change so that this root mean square error is the minimum given the data I have. Now I have to close this window now because we need to first calculate root mean square error. So root mean square error starts with calculating error. Error is the difference between the revenue minus our forecast. As you see, error for the first period is zero. And we can drag down this formula. Again, you have to be careful here because look at this error. It refers to a cell that's empty. If you don't have actual cells and you calculate error, Excel assumes that this empty cell is zero. So that exaggerates the error term, which you cannot calculate error if you don't have actual cells. Therefore, I'm going to delete these cells which are not correct. And the next step is error square. You select the error and for square, you need shift six and then number two. So that finds the square of a number. And again, when you drag down this formula, and as you see, starting from 2020 quarter four, we need to delete error square. And the next step is to calculate mean square error. Mean square error is the average of the error square. So you use an average function, but you need to tell Excel what numbers you want to get the average. So we are going to get the average of error square. So we are going to click here and then close the parentheses and enter. So this is our mean square error. And the final step to calculate root mean square error is the square root of this number. Square root is SQRT function in Excel. And as you see here, Excel is telling us what to do with that function. Square root of number, which number? mean square error. So I click the cell and close the parentheses and enter. So as you see, root mean square error for this model is 99,106.3195. And now the next step is to use solver to minimize this root mean square error by changing alpha and beta. So we click on data and then we click on solver. And now, as I said, our objective function, let me select again, to minimize error and we choose minimum from here and which variables we can change we can change smoothing constants therefore i'm choosing l1 and l2 and also we need to add some constraints we need to add constraints because alpha and beta cannot be greater than one so the first constraint is telling us alpha is less than or equal to one the second constraint is L1 is greater than or equal to zero. The third one is for beta. Beta cannot be greater than one. So beta should be less than or equal to one and beta should be greater than or equal to zero. The next step is we are going to choose an algorithm here to minimize root mean square error 
with the best alpha and beta and then we click on solve and then the excel is going to ask us do you want to keep solve resolution and you will say okay and now as you see our alpha and beta turns out to be one and the root mean square error drops down to 78,452.9413. And also our graph is updated as you see, it's now better. And you see that blue line and the red line are overlapping more than the previous estimate. And final step is the future period forecast, right? We need to forecast for 2020 quarter one till 2022 quarter three. And to do that, we are going to use this last function, h t plus m is equal to ft plus m tt. So we start from 2021 quarter one with an equal sign. And the formula tells us that choose the level forecast, which is ft plus Multiply with a constant m, m represents the number of periods ahead that you want to forecast. In this case, we are going to forecast one period ahead, therefore m is going to be 1, times tt, which is t sub t, is going to be the trend from the previous period, and that's the forecast for 2021 quarter 1. And since I have this information here. My graph is also updating and adding forecasts here. And now for the next period, again, I'm going to use FD plus this time two periods ahead. Therefore, M is two and we will use the same T. And now three periods ahead, FD plus three times TT. And now we continue for four periods ahead, FT plus four times TT. And now we will continue with five periods ahead, five times TT. And the next one is this one plus six times trend. And final forecast is equal to FT plus seven times the trend. So this is all about holds method. Now in the second video, I'm going to show you how to forecast Netflix revenue using regression model.